hot trade in North Togo. These two, especially the canaries of Lomba and Kabihel plates, have become real export products, the producers bring with their craftsmanship a good part of the family's income. The potters themselves only sell in the closest markets. A large part of the ceramics is resold by traders, which increases pot prices depending on distance. Although every pot and plate is recognized by its origin, whether Lomba, Kabiel, Kamkamba or Basar, many of these objects are widespread throughout North Togo. In almost all households local beer brewery, we find the famous Sulundasi. These are big canaries of Lomba origin from Defale which are appreciated almost everywhere for the finesse of their edges. Women say that in these, the beer heats more quickly and that they can therefore save wood. For the plates of the Kabihel potters of Kumea, the case is the same. They make fine plates, with a black color inside, which are known as far away as Lome for their quality. Daily use of pottery In northern Togo, in rural areas, ceramics find their place in almost all areas of daily life. In the kitchen we prepare meals in pots. Large pots are used for the purposes of transporting water and beer. Also, the conservation of water, some crops and other goods are done in large canaries. Other pots are used as a hive of bees. We often see old broken pots on straw roofs in order to tighten the top of the roof. In the past, there were also ceramic lamps. Today, many ceramics are replaced by plastic plates or aluminium canaries. Often, these are very specific household needs, which always give a place to ceramics in daily life. Also, in religious life, where only a pot of a certain shape allows believers to fulfill their duties, we still find ancient forms of ceramics. Ceramic Objects Making In order to obtain the specific resistance, the pots must be fired a few days after their manufacture, when they are well dried. Exposure to fire is mandatory for the resistance of ceramics, but it is not without danger. Potters know well that pots may break in fire. This is why they are very careful about choosing the right time and drying the ceramic properly. In addition, each has specific rules to ensure success. Some always put equal numbers of pots in the fire. Others, on the other hand, light the fire in secret, and no one is allowed to approach the cooking site. Very often they choose the evening for this work, when there is not too much wind. In the evenings before market days we see many fires in the landscape. The fuel is wood or straw, which can give a temperature of up to 700 degrees. How pots are made Pottery technology is similar everywhere. They look for clay which is wetted and then kneaded. The bottom of the pots is made of a mass of clay. The woman builds the edges with small masses, elongated and flattened, of which she raises the edge by approximately 10 centimeters. So, after 15 minutes, the construction is complete. To obtain a quality pot, the potter must then remove the excess clay with a scraper and level the surface with a wet sponge. Now the pot must dry for a day. The next day, we continue to reduce the thickness of the edges. A quality pot must always have very thin edges to reduce weight and to allow heating of the content quickly. Each pottery village has a specific brand. The women of Naware, for example, cover large canaries with black bands. The Komea women do not use colors, but apply fine impressions in fresh clay. Finally, women from different districts of Defale use a small woven straw sausage to cover the entire surface of the pots with a pronounced relief decoration. About pottery and the use of clay. The manufacture of canaries and many other ceramic objects is the exclusive right of women in certain villages. On their wedding day, women return to their husband's household and, once settled in a potter's village, they learn this trade. 
In some villages, pots are produced simply for households' own needs, and orders from outside are rare. Other villages have more professional women. They make a large number of pots per week, which they, or traders bring to the market every week. Above all, the Lomba women from the different districts of Dayfale are highly experienced professionals. They travel to sell in markets up to a distance of 25 kilometers, but they also sell for traders. The raw material for pottery is clay, which is very widespread in North Togo. But women know their varying qualities. Especially in Lomba country, certain qualities have become so rare that men are paid to dig this clay from deep underground. 